Dear students, welcome to the basics on vector calculus. In this session, we are going to recall some basic results which we studied in school as vector algebra and then we are going to see some essential formulas and basics which is needed for the whole unit vector calculus. Both in mathematics and physics, quantities are classified into either scalars or vector. A scalar has only magnitude while vector has both magnitude and direction. We can see the definition. A scalar is a quantity that fully determined by its magnitude alone. So, we can see some examples, distance, speed, mass, energy, pressure, all these things are scalar quantity. The pressure of a fluid at a particular point is a scalar. Similarly, electric potential, temperature field, all are scalar. It does not depend on any direction. It depends only on the magnitude. While on the other side, a vector is a quantity that determined by both magnitude and direction. For example, you take force, momentum, acceleration, velocity, displacement, all these things, it need both magnitude as well as the direction. The velocity of a moving fluid. So, we need a direction. It is going to be a vector. Similarly, gravitational field, magnetic field, all are vector quantities. Now, we introduce a Cartesian coordinate system. It is very important, student. Throughout the unit, we are going to take R vector is Xi vector, Yj vector and Zk vector. From this, we are going to define a scalar function. A scalar function is defined by phi of x, y, z. It need not to be always phi. We can take psi, omega, gamma, alpha, beta, whatever the notations. In general, usually people use phi, where phi is a real valued function. For example, I will take phi as x, y, z or x square plus y square plus z square or anything x square y, z cube minus y square, whatever you want. Next, vector function. A vector function is given by f vector. My f vector is going to be f1 i vector plus f2 j vector plus f3 k vector where f1, f2, f3 are the scalar component functions corresponding to the unit vector i, j and k. Now, let us have a quick comparison for scalar and vector. When you take magnitude, both scalar and vector has magnitude. When you take direction, scalar has no direction while vector has the direction. The quick examples for scalars are temperature and mass while for vectors is velocity and force. Scalar can be represented only as a single number but vector can be represented as a directed line segment. In our school days, we see two different kinds of products. One is dot product, the other one is cross product. So, the dot product is also known as scalar product. If you take two vectors A and B such that they are non-zero vectors, then angle between these two vectors is measured as theta and you can see here, then A dot B vector is going to be mod A into mod B cos theta. This is known as scalar product or dot product. Now, we are going to see a very essential result which we use in problem. Now, if we consider the unit vector i dot i, they are going to be same. So, the angle between these two is 0. So, when you substitute cos 0, cos 0 is going to be 1. Therefore, i vector dot i vector is going to be mod i vector into mod i vector cos 0 is 1. So, we can get 1. Therefore, we can see i dot i, j dot j, k dot k vector is always 1. If you take the remaining combinations i dot j, j dot k and k dot i, they are mutually perpendicular. So, the angle is going to be 90 degree. So, we have cos 90 degree is 0. So, all the other combinations are going to be 0 here. Now, suppose I am taking two vectors A and B. It is represented here. Now, if I want to do A vector dot B vector, just what I have to do? Just simply multiply A1 with B1 because I dot I is 1. Remaining all combinations are 0. Similarly, for J, A2, B2. For K, A3, B3. Therefore, a vector dot b vector is a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3. Because of this result, all the other combinations are 0. Only i dot i, j dot j, k dot k will be 1. The next one is cross product or vector product. 
very important scalar product is going to be always a value it is going to be a magnitude while vector product is going to be a vector function so we remember how to do this a cross b now we have to write the formula a vector cross b vector is modulus of a vector modulus of b vector sin theta into n cap now it is well known a vector b vector and n cap form a right handed twist we can see the diagrammatic representation this is my a vector and this is my b vector and n cap is going to be perpendicular to both a and b vector now cross product rule how to find cross product when two vectors are given to us it is easy to remember we take the same a and b vector what we did for dot product it is going to be first row i j k second row coefficients of i j k with respect to a vector and the third row is going to be coefficients of i j k for b vector now just what you have to do you have to expand this determinant it is very obvious so i am not telling here i am writing the answer directly so you can see this a cross b vector expansion next we are going to see a very important definition for vector calculus vector differential operator i vector do by do x plus j vector do by do y plus k vector do by do z it is known as hamiltonian operator or vector differential operator we can represent this by del people say it as del or nabla we are going to use this as del so del is equal to i vector do by do x plus j vector do by do y plus k vector do by do z so simply we are going to call it as del operator so in our school days either for scalar product or vector product we use this two vectors a and b now in vector calculus instead of a vector i am going to take del and instead of b vector i am going to take a vector field f or f vector that's it notations are changing here so now with this del this is going to be a vector point function i can multiply a scalar this is the first thing i can do so it is known as gradient so multiplying a scalar point function with del will give you gradient so it is known as del phi or grade phi or gradient phi next we can do two different product that is cross products and dot product for this i am going to take a vector point function f then i can do del dot f vector and del cross f vector this del dot f vector is known as divergence of the f given f vector and this del cross f vector is known as curl f vector so divergence of a vector is going to be del dot f vector curl of a vector point function is going to be del cross f vector so we are going to use this three in our problem solving purposes now see phi is a scalar now if i do multiplication with del del is a vector so del phi is always a vector then del dot f vector since both del and f are vectors then del dot f is going to be a scalar and del cross f vector so cross product of two vectors is always going to be a vector these are all the simple things we have to remember so with this we close the basic session in the forthcoming session we are going to solve problems how to find del phi that is my gradient divergence and curl Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe to our channel and share it to your friends. See you in the next video. Bye bye.